And today, I'm not gonna have a full recording the normal hour and 20 minutes as I get ready to go home. Instead, we're gonna do a shorter version. You see that ambulance right there? We're gonna talk about that. Let's pause. Hi, how are you? See you later. Hi. So, we're going to talk about the people in the ambulance. You know, today is a special day of the school. The children get some kind of health check, whatever that may come to mean in China. And, and the first thing this morning, I want to air my grievances out today. See the nice BMWs over there from the sister school here. First thing I noticed on the health check is the doctors, the doctors of the glorious health checking system standing by the boys' bathroom in their lab coats smoking cigarettes as if the children were that hard to corrupt to begin with and smoking is a serious issue in developing countries so I I try to yell at the doctors to stop smoking cigarettes on the school ground and uh you know, that's a very good example of the insight into China. And not just the doctors, to be very masculine in China is to smoke cigarettes. The smoking rate in China, as is with many developing countries, is very, very high. I don't think it should be perpetuated in the school system though, as long as I call myself a teacher. It's amazing that they could be awarded with such monetary value as the three MDMWs we passed, there's a Maserati, Lamborghini Service Center with one, two, three, four, four Lamborghinis. Four Lamborghinis, and they learn enough to make so much money to buy Lamborghinis, and they didn't learn enough to stop smoking. That's terrible. The Marvel Man can make a comeback here. Joe Camel. Now. There's a article, you know, I want to talk about Chinese empathy and trouble brewing and the next generation. I and fear. I am scared. Oh, I'm scared, I forgot my, my music. Is there music going here? Make a stop here. Always oh, should have music going. Get some music going on the, on the vlog here. What do we got? Sorry about that. Get some music going. Okay. Sorry about that. I want to 
want to talk about empathy and fear. I read it on an article today about the problem of the fur or die or die, whatever. The second generation in China going to Canada and buying so many, so many houses that the local Canadians in Montreal complain that foreign ownership of houses for people that don't even live in Canada have caused the local real estate market to become unaffordable. It's a serious issue. And most of those super ultra rich that are buying the real estate in Canada are Chinese. And then the second thing they buy after they buy their house are cars. And they actually had a study that says, I forget the, the statistics, but it was counting the number of cars that were purchased over a hundred thousand Canadian dollars. And this is a great article I saw on Reddit about the youth, about the hordes of the youth and the second generation that are coming from China that don't have to work and they've got millions of dollars to buy Lamborghinis and watches and very luxurious love style that have basically got all their money from, cor from their corrupt family members. It's a big issue in China. The concentration of wealth in the hands of the few and how much of that wealth you know, has even been obtained illegally, right? But, so it's a terrible thing in Montreal. You know, I'll try to put a link to that article in this in this blog entry. But the uh, second generation in China, opposite to a couple generations before when the people were so hungry they were eating dirt this new generation is like uh, buying Lamborghinis right and left and Maseratis and everything else now that seems like a small problem maybe or what you have to realize though is that's just the tip of the iceberg the tip of the iceberg and what do I mean when I say that Well, let, me tell, well, let me tell you what I mean. Let me fix my equalizer. Let me tell you what I mean. In China, they're following a dangerously consumeristic lifestyle while the old the old model was to save 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 that is definitely 
not the model for the new generation. China used to save a lot. Not happening now. In fact, the last president of China, Deng Xiaoping, he actually led a movement in his papers about leading China. And one of the main goals was to rich to get rich is glorious. I repeat, to get rich is glorious. And that is the ideals installed into the youth. To get rich is glorious. A glorious thing, getting rich. Not healthcare, not science, not education, not innovation. Getting rich is glorious. And that, my friends, leads us to some problems. That leads us to a lack of in empathy. And materialism in the youth. Let me tell you what I mean. Today, I'm teaching about, I'm using their state textbook, and they have a section in it, a uh, quarter of a page, about the WWF, the World Wildlife Fund. And that in itself is somewhat amazing that they would have that, because they never had that before. So I carpe diem, or I seize the opportunity. I seize the opportunity to use the, the WWF in the chapter that talks about endangered animals. And I got about four different videos from YouTube to teach about the WWF in China. And the first video I got was about the history of the WWF. About four minute video for eighth grade students. Now I can tell you, these students, 90% of them do not give a fuck about nature. Or, I mean, they don't take no, I, I typed everything on one note and I translated it into Chinese, all the vocabulary, and I had a real nice video. And it relates to the article in the book that they had to do. So they had to learn new vocabulary. Aside from the normal, you know, I have to force the children to take their notebooks out. Force them to take notes. Because their Chinese teacher doesn't care if they take notes. So they hate it that the foreign teacher tries to teach, actually. And it talks about when it was founded in 1961, April talks about their first office in Switzerland and it talks about the different stages of developing the WWF from investing in science to protecting tigers to protecting the forest and rainforest to ocean uh, sea life projects to renewable energy and biodiversity and it's a really good four minute introduction to the history of WWF and it even talks for about 20 seconds about the controversy. I have people who want to pay me to let their children play with my kids just so they could have good face and oh yes my children has foreign kid faces friends 
not everybody in China is like that, but so many are, and the, and the system is so conditioning of the kids that it is a scary, scary preview. I mean, these, they're going to grow up to be the leaders of China. And, and 18.7% of the world's population is being educated in this way. And their media about KFC and McDonald's commercials is way more than what you would see in America. But they're, they're consumption driven, uh, you know, the consumption driven psychology and, and lack of empathy. I mean, in that book about the WWF, when the teacher teaches that, that lesson, even that whole little unit about the book, they don't talk anything about the subject. They won't have any research, any realistic discussion about any of the topics. The only thing they will do is they will teach that section of the book only for the test to understand some vocabulary words. The children will have very low comprehension even though they can pass the test. But the subject alone will be untouchable. The teachers won't teach it. The students don't care. So if you go in there thinking you're gonna introduce the, the, I, the WWF, it's just scary is seeing the Chinese people at the zoos trying to hit the animals with their umbrellas, stealing fish, and going to Egypt and riding on the pair. I mean, it's the, the attitude of, of, un, of un, inhumaneness uh, permeates society when, and it's, it's, it's a scary, scary thing so I just wanted to bring that up and I will go home and I will make sure as a result that I make sure every single one of my own children gets an extra dose of humanity and their homeschool lessons and this is just a warning about the the legions of classrooms children who if you want to talk about you know what they talk about when you go to school how much is your laptop how much is your phone what kind of phone is that is that an iPhone and you think that you know trust me I was anti-consumerist in, in America I was very liberal. I was, I support ad busters and I understand that America is a consumerist society. But I will tell you that the new Chinese generation is much more, and, he, and they might not be educated about all the different types of things they can buy yet. Their consumer education is not that high as Americans' consumer education. However, given their thirst for wealth and materialism and their lack of compassion due to the absence of, of, of any kind of programs of multiple cultures, about any animals, I mean, any anything they, Sure, they have a little goat, shall ya ya, and like the state sponsored, the state sponsored sadness, they will unite. And if there's some kind of state sponsored advertisement about a panda, they will be like, oh yeah, oh our panda, and whatever the state says. But there is no individual opportunity in the classroom 
to discuss topics or it's just really really disheartening and to go class after class after class you know they want to they have no if they, they want to put a poster on the back of their classroom supposedly talks about foreign culture and, the, and they copy a part of their book or what their teacher tells them to copy and they know a little more about foreign culture than North Korea knows about foreign culture. It's saddening, maddening. Well, I don't want to be too negative, but I'm going home right now. I have family time with my kids, as I do every Wednesday night, and hold them extra tight. And then at the end of the night, while they go to bed, I will actively make sure their curriculum has a good dosage of compassion. And if you're homeschooling, let me remind you the power of shaping your own children's psychology. I can see from this culture that has the absence of any of that, how if you live in a, wherever you're living in homeschooling, you must be careful that they do not follow the children in the Chinese classroom. And I guess the difficulty is, as a homeschooling parents, is there's so many, so many injustices in the world, in so many areas, that we want our children to have compassion for. You know, good luck organizing it. I know I've got my, my job ahead of me. You know, build that fire. Don't ever let that fire grow out in your children to grow up to cold, consumptuous kids with lack of empathy. And do not follow those footsteps, please. Well, I'm guessing if you watch me this far, this blog, we don't got nothing to worry about. So anyways, I'm gonna sign out right now because my battery's almost dead. And I'll see you guys later on Deep Thought Cycle Vlogs. Bye. Bye-bye. Come ride with me later.